Hi, I'm Brady Irwin with Science of Speed, and today I'd like to go over cleat installation on your cycling shoes. One of the most commonly overlooked things that we see on our bike fits is the actual cleat on the bottom of your cycling shoe. Majority of times these are made out of plastic. In this case, we're working with a pair of Shimano SPDSL road cleats. And as you'll see here, these have quite a bit of wear to them. It's a fairly simple process that you can do at home if you have a set of replacement cleats, a four millimeter Allen key, and a Sharpie. Road cleat placement on the bottom of your shoe is extremely important. And if you've had a fit or you've ridden with those pair of shoes and those cleats for a year or so, you want to match up as best as you can the position that you currently have to the position of the new cleats once they're installed. Let's go ahead and overview how you're going to do that. So, as you can see here, we have everything we need. We have our shoes, our new cleats, a Sharpie to outline the cleats that are currently on our shoes, a four millimeter Allen key, which will be used to remove and install the new cleats. And most importantly, but often forgotten is some actual grease to go on the bolts of the cleats themselves. This is more for down the road when you have to replace the cleats that you're getting ready to put on. As we pedal, we sweat, our, our feet perspire a little bit. And what we've often seen is that with that perspiration, a lot of times the bolts that are in the shoes will, or in the cleats will get stuck inside of the shoes. And you either end up damaging the shoes or you're just simply unable to get them out of the, get the cleats off of the shoe. So let's go ahead and begin. Just to give you a quick comparison, you're gonna see, I'm using a blue cleat for Shimano, uh, which is their middle of the road float. It gives you two degrees of, of float, which is the amount of movement that your shoes have as, uh, as you go through the pedal stroke. And you'll see here quite a bit of wear. These still have the blue indicator tabs on either side. Mine is missing one on this shoe. And if we compare it to the other ones, you can see that they're very worn on this one as well. You'll also see very smooth here with quite a bit of wear on this one. So those, that's one indicator. You can also look at the front of your cleats. Sometimes you'll find excessive wear on the front. So you'll see it on the very back inside here. If you have quite a bit of lateral movement of the foot throughout the pedal stroke, you're gonna see quite a bit of wear in this area potentially. So let's go ahead and get started. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take our Sharpie and we're gonna outline our cleats. And you're trying to get as close to the cleat as you possibly can while still getting that marking on your shoe itself. So you can use a, I've got a black Sharpie here. Some people will use a silver Sharpie and that'll stand out a little bit. I prefer the black because then you don't have this giant silver line on your shoe uh, moving forward. So we've got the first one traced there. You can see that line all the way around and then also on the back of the cleat and we'll go on to the next shoe here. All right, so we've got both shoes outlined now. We're ready to go ahead, remove the cleats and get ready to install the new cleats. So you take your four millimeter Allen key, remember righty tighty, lefty loosey, same thing here as it is with any other traditionally threaded screw. And you're gonna go ahead and loosen all of these up. It's as simple as that. Now you can really see that outline of my cleat that I put on there with that Sharpie. So all the way down to the back to the tail of it, we're set to go with that one. And let's go ahead and take it off of the second shoe here as well. And you'll notice here that I'm not having to use a lot of force to get these off. Um, one of the main reasons for that is, is there was plenty of grease on the bolts when they were installed. And also I usually tend to replace my cleats about every six months or so. So these cleats aren't, you know, three years old and have had the opportunity to seize on there. So again, you'll see second, second cleat outline here. You'll see this shoe actually has a very nice grid system on it. That's great. If you want to take a picture of that, it gives you a secondary uh, image that you can help to line it up with, but it's not really necessary when you've got the Sharpie outline on here. Let's move on to the next step. So you've got your new cleats and here with the cleats off of the shoe, it's even more apparent just the amount of wear that was on those. So you can see here, this is a wear indicator line on here. That's a good indication. If that line is gone, 
it's time to replace your cleats. You've worn all the way through that, and now you're down to the important th down to the important part of the cleat. You'll also see that the the bumper on the front of this one was starting to come off as well. So some things to look for. You'll see here with these cleats, we've got the important parts. You've got your cleats, you've got the backing plates that will hold your cleats on, and they set in there just like this. And then the screws that are going to hold those on there. The next step, you're gonna take your grease, and you can either get a little bit on your finger, or some people will use a brush, depends on what your preference is, and you're just looking to put a little dab on each screw. Again, you don't need a great deal of grease on each thing. You're just looking, or on each screw, you're just looking to get enough on the threads that it's going to last. Okay, all the bolts are greased. Now on to the next step. So, again, you've got your cleat and your new cleat and your shoe. You're going to line that new cleat up with those Sharpie markers. And you're gonna do the installation. Now the first thing is, I would go ahead and get all three bolts in there before you really about get, worry about getting that alignment perfect. And just snug it down until it touches that backing plate that's holding the cleat in place. Again, not tight. You can see I can still move the cleat around on there. So it's just holding everything in place for you. As you're putting these in there, be careful not to cross thread your cleat um, your screws or the the actual portion that's inside of the the shoe itself if you do that some of the shoes have a replaceable grommet that goes inside of them but it's easier to uh, be cautious now and not have to worry about it down the road okay so we've got these on here now everything is lined up what you'll want to do is go ahead and just start to snug these up slowly and work your way around as you start to tighten them down. And more than anything, if you get ones, if you go to tighten one down, especially this top one all the way, a lot of times it will twist the cleat and then you, you mess up the alignment of it and you're gonna need to start over again by loosening that. So if you snug them all down just a little bit to start, come back through and tighten them all down again, you're good to go. Okay, so that one's done. We'll move on to the next shoe. Again, we've already got everything greased. We've got our backing plates in the cleat. So back through this step all over again. And you can see here, it's taking very little effort. I'm not even having to use the T-handle portion of the, the screwdriver initially to get those in. If you find a lot of resistance, go ahead and back that screw out and make sure that you have it threaded in there properly. As you can see here, we've got both of our new cleats installed. Everything is lined up with the marker lines that we put on there, and we're set to go for our next ride. So after a week or so, I would recommend you go back in and just double check and make sure all these bolts are tight. Sometimes they do have the ability or they do tend to back off a little bit. So, so as you can see, with about 10 to 15 minutes of your time, you can get your cleats swapped out and your road bike ready for the next ride. 
whether you're using Shimano cleats or look cleats, the method and the, and the procedures are going to be the exact same. Your tools might be slightly different, whether you'll need a slotted screwdriver or maybe even a three millimeter Allen key for some of those look cleats that are out there. Either way, you're ready for your next ride. So thanks for watching. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact us. We hope you have a wonderful day and a safe next ride.